All right, I just want to do a little introduction to this video I want to play here. Um, talk about Paul, Paul Begley being a Catholic. I tried to find the original um, videos uh, where Begley is basically trying to perform the Eucharist, the whole mass type of a thing that Catholics do. I tried to find the originals and I can't find them on Begley's channel, can't find them anywhere. They were deleted. You're going to see why as we go through this video. But this video is, is a little bit less than three minutes, two minutes and 58 seconds according to this here. But uh, notice the crucifixes all over his walls. He says he's married to a Catholic. And then, and then watch this satanic spirit coming out of this guy when he starts to perform the Mass all right, on his channel. Of course, he tries to call it communion. It isn't the same thing. Let's watch this. Don't get mad. I know some of you who hate the Catholics, but you need to calm down. I married a, a beautiful, blonde hair, blue-eyed, my high school sweetheart, who was baptized as a Catholic as an infant. Now, I'm a, a non-denominational preacher. I've pastored in a in Baptist church, a Pentecostal church, back, pastoring in a Baptist church. I'm a non-denominational preacher, married to him, and, and my wife's with me. We attend the same church. We work together. But we all work together. What, we've, what we have learned is there's one body, and so we try our best to touch the lives of sins to the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as often as we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we eat the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We proclaim his death until he comes again. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is coming again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Would you please take up the bread? Oh, dear Lord. Oh. This is the body of Christ. This is the body of Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Take it, eat of it, and receive the salvation of the Lord. Oh, oh. You said in your word that man can't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. Take of this bread and eat it. It is the body of the Lord. Now take of the cup. Oh, this is the cup. Oh, this is the blood of Christ. <laughs> the cup of salvation. This is the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of sins. Take it. Drink it. Drink and receive the salvation of the Lord and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Receive this communion right now for a physical healing. Receive it for your mental state of mind, for your financial blessings. I want you to receive it right now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. I'd love the entire body of Christ. Catholics, Christians, all denominations. And then, and, and I mean, there's just so much going on. So please, don't fight with each other. I beg you, children. I beg you. Protestants, Catholics, Jews, different denominations of Christianity. Please, know that the Bible says in the last days, it talks about a lamb that was slain with seven eyes. That's the seven different denominations of Christ. Now, if you think that that guy is saved, I feel real bad for you. There's no way that guy is saved. That kind of blasphemy right there is what Christians were tortured to death over. Because they denied it. They rejected it. They said that bread and that wine is not the physical flesh and blood of Jesus Christ. And that thing does not save you any more than drinking, you know, anything. It, the mass is satanic. 
always has been, always will be. Communion in the New Testament there, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I believe it is. Let me look it up real quick here. Communion is done in remembrance. That's all it is. It does not save you. It is about examining yourself and saying, you know, am I... Uh, let me just look here real quick. Uh, okay, now I'm wrong. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 is where it's at. It's done in remembrance. And all you're doing there is you're examining yourself and saying, okay, am I messing around in sin? Is there sin that's unconfessed? It's about fellowship with the Lord. It's not about salvation. Right? It's remembering Jesus Christ's death. That's all it is. It's just a remembrance. That's that's what the thing's for. So, you know, and, and there are people that, you know, do it once a year. Some don't even do it that much. I mean, it's 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 not this thing that you have to continually be doing it over and over and over again. And I've been to Baptist churches, by the way. Babel buildings really is the, the you know, better, more accurate description of them. I've been to them places. They do it every week. Just like the Catholics do. Hmm. Interesting. And you know, there are others too. I'm not just picking on Baptists. All these denominations that basically trace back to Roman Catholicism with a lot of their practices. And I know a lot of people get upset at me about that. But research it. Where do these practices come from? They come from Catholicism. And Paul, big lie here, is a Catholic. You do that kind of stuff with the the mass there that he held, dressed in all black, like a Catholic priest, you kind of you pull that kind of junk off, and you want me to believe that you are saved? No way. Paul Begley is a Catholic, and these guys are being raised up. They use the King James Bible, and they come out and they're. Oh, you know, I'm a Baptist preacher and it's it's faith in the blood of Jesus and all this other stuff. And they're going faith in Jesus, but it's also okay to be a Catholic. Don't cut on the Catholics. And we can have crucifixes around our house and we can do the Mass. But we're not Catholics, we're Baptists. Uh-huh. Sure you are. You're Catholic. That's what these people are. Stay away from Paul Begley. The guy is extremely dangerous. And I'm telling you, the, the Vatican has planted probably thousands of these guys out there, specifically so within the Baptists, because, you know, that's one that they really like to get to. Because there's are, there are a lot of Baptists that are independent and stuff, and the Catholics, you know, can't really control independent separate bodies. They can get into denominations. They can take over the Lutherans. They can take over the Methodists, which they have done now, by the way. Those two organizations are back under Roman Catholicism. And see, what's happening is Roman Catholicism, as I've talked about in other videos, they've created all these different systems out there. Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormonism, all this different stuff. They've all been created. Even atheistic communism, which is a religion, Islam, all that stuff has been created by Catholicism. And what they're doing is they're slowly starting to pull them all back in underneath their control. The New World Order religion, the, or, the religion of the Antichrist, is Roman Catholicism. That's what it's going to be. And slowly they're starting to pull the strings now. They're starting to pull everybody back in. And the Pope, this Jesuit Pope, the first one that's openly a Jesuit, this guy is now starting to talk and try to act like he's a Bible believer. We're justified by faith. It's the death of Jesus on the cross that pays for your sin. Just like Paul Begley. Paul Begley is coming out and he's, oh, I'm a Baptist. I'm, I'm, you know, I believe the King James Bible. I read out of the King James Bible. I'm King James only, you know, uh, which he isn't. I proved that in the other video. But this guy's coming out and he's saying, don't cut on the Catholics. It's, you know, there's nothing wrong with Catholicism. You know, we might have a few differences here and there, but, you know, let's all come together. Let's use the Vatican versions you know, and, and say that there's really nothing wrong with them. It's just what you prefer. And let's, let's you know, let's put crucifixes in our homes and let's celebrate the Mass and, and everything else. I'm not a Catholic, mind you. I'm a, I'm a Baptist preacher. Uh-huh. Watch out for this movement. I'll tell you what, boy, if you don't, if you don't, don't know your King James Bible, 
you're going to get suckered into this. And if you don't know history, church history, know that the Catholics are the ones that have always persecuted Christians, real, true, Bible-believing Christians. You are going to fall into this one-world system right there. Flee from this false prophet. Stay away from him.